All right, good day, everybody. Um, it's been a wild morning, so <laughs> I'm getting it done, getting it done. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, I was thinking we could maybe do a live church this week, but a few people were away, and I didn't really communicate with people that well this week because it was just kind of up in the air, so I, I apologize for that. But um, we'll see you next week. I, I'd like to do it live. I like to be able to interact with people and take prayer requests and stuff like that. So hopefully next week we can, we can do it live. Um, I'll just try and stay in touch with people, let them know what's going on. So let's get started. Uh, thank you, God, for bringing us together today. Thank you that we can at least do this. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will show us what we need to see, that you will open our hearts and illuminate and just lead us and bring us into all truth and, and wisdom, as Jesus said you would. Thank you that you're with us and thank you that you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are talking today about our dependence on the Holy Spirit. It is essential to walk this out with the Holy Spirit. I don't understand when some Christians, they think, well, God doesn't speak anymore, or God doesn't do this or that. It's like, how, how are you ever going to walk out of the calling? Like, it's, you, you, you're at that point, you're literally just, it's, it's just human effort trying to make this work. And it's not about, about behavior modification, it's about transformation and having a relationship with, like we talked about last week, it's a relationship with God. It's our, that's what Christianity is. So, um... Dependence on the Holy Spirit. It kind of rolls off of last week when we talked about um, salvation is what brings you into a relationship with God. It's not just you're saved and you float around for the rest of your life. It's it's you're, you're saved and brought into a relationship with God and everything flows out of that relationship. And our dependence on the Holy Spirit, how crucial that is. That's a gift from God that that um, it does so many things. We're going to get into that. So, John 14, uh, verse 26, Jesus says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my, in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever things I have said unto you. Now, Jesus was speaking to his, to his disciples here, but he's also speaking to us because later Jesus says, go out and make disciples of all nations and teach them to do the same things that I taught you. So whatever he says to the disciples, it, it, essentially, it's an extent by extension to us as well. Now, the Comforter, uh, I looked it up in Strong's Concordance. I usually don't go too technical on stuff in our church, but... Strong's G3875 is the Greek word parakletos, which was used. It's someone who is called to one's aid, an advocate, intercessor, consoler, comforter, helper. Now, how many of us, like, just in our walk with God, how many of us have experienced the Holy Spirit consoling, comforting, helping, guiding, uh, advising, like, all these things we've experienced the Holy Spirit. If, if, you, if you've walked with the Holy Spirit, you've experienced these kinds of things, and you realize how essential the Holy Spirit is, not just helpful, but essential. Um, the, another word used is paraclete, which is where the Greek word paracletus comes from. It means an advocate, an advisor, uh, in New Testament times is an attorney or lawyer, someone giving evidence who stands up in court, who pleads another's case before a judge, a legal assistant. And that's, that's another way you can interpret, uh, who the Holy Spirit is for us. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. So as Christians, as born-again Christians, we have the blood of Jesus covering us. It, it washes us from all unrighteousness. And then we have the Holy Spirit it's himself who intercedes on our behalf directly for us. So we're set. I mean, as a, as a spirit-filled believer in Jesus Christ, you are set. You have the Holy Spirit interceding for you and you have the blood of Jesus covering you from all sin. And it empowers us to walk this life out as God called and intended us to. So go into... My passages, I lost some of my bookmarks here, so you may have to bear with me. But John, wait, was it? Where was I? I'm losing my mind here. Had a crazy morning. It was, it was, oh. <laughs> I thought I was ready, and then all of a sudden everything just went wild. Um, yeah, we'll start with John 15. Why not? John 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch that in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So what he's saying is that he is the vine. We all as believers are the branches. If we don't bear fruit, he gets rid of it. <laughs> he's like, you're out. Um, I'm going to say that casually, but James 2.20, I keep going back to this verse, that faith should produce works in you. It's not faith plus works. It's that true faith will, will produce a change in you, will produce fruit in you. Um and if you truly, truly have, have repented to God, you've entered into a relationship with God. So walk this out because everything's going to flow out of that relationship. Um, every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he removes it. And every branch that does bear fruit, he purges it that it may bear, bring forth more fruit. I heard a pastor this week talking about, about that passage, funny enough. And he, he made the point, how does God reward fruitfulness? We, we, we would think, well, maybe he'll give you a promotion or a pay raise or a break or or a uh, some kind of reward to how does he, and he does, he does do these things. He does do these things. God does promote you. God does 
bring you rest. God, God does um, bless you and give you gifts and stuff. But but whenever you bear fruit, he purges it that it may bear even more fruit. So God rewards your fruitfulness with purging. That's <laughs> not always thought of as a, as a pleasant thing to go through. But you think that when a branch, if, if, if you have a, like, we've got fruit trees, and we need to do a better job with them, to be honest. But when a, a tree has tons of branches coming out, some branches bear fruit, some don't. The, the branches that don't bear fruit, you cut them off because the plant is sending nutrients and energy and all this stuff to the, all the branches. Why are you going to waste that on branches that aren't producing anything? If you cut off the unfruitful branches or the unfruitful parts of a branch, like, like you have a branch that is bearing fruit, even parts of that branch don't bear fruit, but some parts do. Cut off the parts that don't bear fruit and it redirects all that nutrients and energy right back to the parts that are bearing fruit so that they can produce even more. And God does that in our life. If he sees that we're bearing fruit through our walk with the Holy Spirit, through our relationship with God, then he'll start pruning us because he's saying, okay, this one's producing fruit, let's do it. And he'll, he'll prune us so that we take away the things that are distracting, the things that are that are taking up our time, our resources, our energy, our devotion. He, he, he starts pruning those things off so that we can redirect all of that towards our relationship with God and bear even more fruit. Because um, you think like if you if you just give like a, a, a moment of your time to God every morning, even how much that can impact your day. Well, what happens if you start doing that on a regular basis? Sorry, I just, I don't know if that got weird for you. I just clicked something weird. Um, so yeah, God does that for our benefit. Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So God's word also helps to purify us and, and to purge us. Abide in me and I in you. And to abide, we talked about last week, is to remain as one, to be as one. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. You cannot do this without God. You cannot bear fruit without God, without the Holy Spirit working through you. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. As far as God's concerned, the things that are truly really important that matter, that go on to, into eternity, you cannot do any of it. Nothing without God, without the Holy Spirit, without your relationship with God. So what we're talking about this week, it really builds off of what we did last week. Um, yeah, You cannot produce some things or a few things or even one thing without God. You can do nothing without Jesus. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And you can't ca be cast forth unless you were once a part of it. So it's just the warning. We we're called to this. We're called to grow. Um, and it's withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in ye, and you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And that's what we're called. We're called to bear much fruit. Jesus talks about the profitable servants that, that invested what they were given, and they, and they produced even more. He talks about the seeds that fell on good soil and produced 30, 60, or 100 times as much. It's what we're called to. This is what glorifies God, and it's what, it's what our calling is. Um, Ephesians, uh, sorry, not Ephesians, Galatians 5, uh, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. So the Holy Spirit, we're establishing the Holy Spirit is a comforter, an encourager, a consoler, a helper, an intercessor, um, interceding on our behalf. The Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. The Holy Spirit... Uh, bears fruit in us. So when Jesus were talking, John 15, 1 to 8 that we just read, he's talking about us bearing fruit. That happens through the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit is what, what produces a change in us when we yield to the Holy Spirit in faith. We're not trying to do this with our own effort. You yield to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit begin transforming you. The Holy Spirit will start producing um, these fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Uh, love. Love. It produces love, uh, selflessness, charity, compassion, Holy Spirit produces joy and peace, even in horrible situations. If you've experienced that, you feel the Holy Spirit bring you peace and joy in the midst of a very, very hard trial. Long suffering. And I, I don't like a lot of modern translations. They say patience because patience doesn't really cut it. Long suffering is it's showing that sometimes you go through long periods of suffering. The Holy Spirit gives you that endurance, that patient endurance to continue and to not give up. Um, the Holy Spirit produces gentleness and goodness and faith. Even faith, like, yes, you have to choose if you're going to operate in faith, but the Holy Spirit is one who even empowers you to do that. Um, meekness. And meekness is more of restraint. Don't get the wrong idea that meekness is means you're a spineless doormat. Like That's not being meek. That's just being foolish. Meekness is restraint strength. Jesus was incredibly powerful, incredibly strong. And you'll see that in Revelation, you see that Jesus comes back as a warrior to defeat the Antichrist and his armies. Jesus is ridiculously powerful. But... He restrained it. Jesus restrained all of that during his ministry. Well, think of when he was arrested in the garden and, and, and falsely accused and then crucified. He restrained his strength in order to fulfill the plan and the will of the Father. 
um, it's meekness and temperance. Temperance, is, a lot of, again, modern translations will say something like self-control. And that's not cutting it because self-control is just controlling your surface emotions and not acting out, having some sense of discipline. And those things are good. But temperance goes even deeper. Temperance is like, I'm not going to be even anger or, or frustration or whatever's going on in your spirit. Even that, just the Holy Spirit obliterates it and just brings you peace. And people, if you have self-control, people can be angry on the inside, but control outwardly on the outside. And if you've ever been around those kinds of people, it's really awkward <laughs> and you don't want that. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit fixes the problem on the inside. You know, make a cup clean on the inside and the outside will be clean as well, like Jesus said. Um, that's what the Holy Spirit does. So the Holy Spirit also bears fruit in us. Um, Romans 8, uh, yeah, I go to 26, I guess. It's a bit of jumping around here. Um, Romans 8, 26 and 27, Paul says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Because there's so much going on in life and even in the spiritual realm that we have no idea about, really, or, or not really full our understanding of. Um, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is interceding on our behalf to the Father. And he that searcheth the hearts, which is God, the Father, uh, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit is making intercession for the saints, for those who place their trust in Jesus. And you go back to the, the, the one interpretation of uh, Paraclete, which is uh, a legal advisor. Uh, or like a, like an attorney, like he is our attorney. God has a legal system. If he didn't, then Jesus didn't need to die. We had a, we had a debt that was owed that had to be punished, um, and that's what that's why people are sent to hell. But we're we're not going through that because we placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and repented and given our hearts to God. And now we're covered by the blood of Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf. Like we're in the best boat ever, right? So the Holy Spirit is interceding also just for our benefit, for our development and growth. As believers, I, I mean, that's the whole point of this passage is that the Holy Spirit is here to help us. The Holy Spirit is praying for things that we're not even aware of. So it's, it, the Holy Spirit is absolutely crucial to walking out our walk in God. Um, verse 8, Romans eight fourteen, backing up a bit, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You're supposed to be recalled to be led of the Spirit of God. Um, Acts 17, 28, I think it was. I, it was, I used, used it last week as well. It says, In him we live and move and have our being. Our existence is found in God. We live, we have our being in God, in our in the Holy Spirit. Because some people have this idea that you got to walk this life out just by human wisdom and human reasoning, and you, you're never you're never going to please God or do anything that has eternal value. Really doing that because on our own, humans are are done and toast. But Romans eight fourteen for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For in Him we live, move, and have our being. And I love that. It's just that we're we're supposed to be led of the Spirit of God. Which means you need to hear the Spirit of God. You need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leadings and, and convictions and, and direction and, and whatever the Holy Spirit's working in you. You need to learn to listen to that and to, to really connect with God and build excuse me, your relationship with God, which is what we talked about last week. Um, but the Holy Spirit empowers that and makes it all possible. Ephesians 1.13 says, Paul says, um, I'll start halfway through the verse, in whom after ye... After that you believed, you were sealed with the, that Holy Spirit of promise. And the point there is that he's saying we're sealed because we believe in Jesus Christ and put our faith in him. He has sealed us. God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not only interceding, advocating, helping, comforting, encouraging, bearing fruit, um, all this stuff. But the Holy Spirit is also sealing us as, as God's children and indwelling us. If you go to 1 Corinthians 6.19, Paul says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides within us as believers. And so we're told, like, don't grieve the Spirit. Don't, don't like, knowing that the Holy Spirit of God is within you, should you be watching all those things you watch? Should you be talking about certain things? Should you be entertaining certain ideas or whatever? You know, like, what you think, say, do, watch, always be mindful of God, the Holy Spirit's in you. And instead of, if you ever get that, those kinds of thoughts or feel conviction, just turn to God. Say, God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have, I, I'm, I'm not going down that way. And just turn back to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit redirect you. God is incredibly humble and gentle. God <laughs> doesn't just take control of you. You think of when a demon possesses somebody, they'll, it doesn't always happen this way. A demon possession can be sneaky, but in extreme cases, they'll completely take control of a person's body and, and speak through them and, and move them. And, and it's this horrible manifestation. And, that's what a demon, that's what the evil spirits want to do. The Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit resides within you. The Holy Spirit is so, 
the opposite. You're, I say, possessed by the Holy Spirit, but you're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is so gentle and humble that the Holy Spirit does not take control of your voice and, and, and your body and, and start doing stuff through you. The Holy Spirit always respects us because love does not demand its own way. It's 1 Corinthians 13. And God is love. So the Holy Spirit waits for us to seek, seek him. So we need to be intentional, but you can't just sit back and float around and be like, oh, well, maybe the Holy Spirit will do this or that. You know, like God doesn't, he works in mysterious ways. And like, like that's not even a Bible verse. It's, it's people say that because they don't understand God. If you understand God, you realize you need to be intentional. You need to pursue him and seek him in your heart. Take time alone, dedicate it to God and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and work through you. Um, John 14, 26. Uh, I read that, right? Um, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost and the father will send in my name. I'm reading it again. It's a good verse. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. John 16, 7, 13, 14. For if I go not away, Jesus said, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Don't get too dependent on a, on a, on a, on a ministry, a church, a Christian in your life, on a pastor, a teacher, anything. God will and does use people. But at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will confirm what that person's saying. The Holy Spirit should ideally be leading a pastor or a teacher or someone in a position of authority. Um, but they can still make mistakes. And the Holy Spirit, if some, if you, you can be listening to a pastor that's amazing on so many issues, but they can make a mistake here or there, even unintentionally. And the Holy Spirit might give you a red flag. Like that's just a little off. Like don't go there. You know, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And even just in your prayer life, just sitting and submitting to God, studying scripture, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes and illuminate things and and, and um, just teach you. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads you into all truth. So don't put all your hope and faith and trust into a person, to any person or ministry or church. You put it in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will use people, but people do make mistakes. Um, and sometimes pursue after things they shouldn't. And that can give people a wrong impression that the Holy Spirit's okay with that. And it's not. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth. Um, yeah, so ultimately, how can you possibly live this life and walk this calling out without the Holy Spirit? Like, uh, as we're called to as Christians, you can't. If you want to bear fruit, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears fruit in us. The Holy Spirit seals us, indwells us. The Holy Spirit teaches us, empowers us, um, relays Jesus' words and messages to us, and uh, equips us and, and leads us into all truth and brings things to remembrance. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. John 14, 26, he shall teach you all things. You need, you need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit, be led of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're called to as Christians. And I just want to encourage you guys just to, to, to really dig in, to press in with God, spend time with God, listen, and, and just ask the Holy Spirit to make himself more known to you and to help you be sensitive to his leading. Um, and just have an open heart to open your eyes and your ears so you can, you can hear and see what God's showing you and saying. And just remember that you need, for again, we're called to walk this out with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's one who empowers us and makes this change possible. So um, I, I, I guess that's pretty much it, I think. I just want to double check. I don't think I missed anything that was on my notes. But um, yeah, I think that was, yeah, about it. I hope that's an encouragement and a reminder um, just to seek the Holy Spirit and to remember who the Holy Spirit is and how vital the Holy Spirit is. Because we talk about Jesus all the time, we talk about the Father all the time, and that's excellent. But the, but the third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. And just in case there's any animosity, some people have this idea, well, I don't say animosity, but confusion. Um, 1 John 5, 7, I think it is. It's in the King James, but a lot of modern translations have taken it out because they use corrupted garbage manuscripts from Alexandria in their Bibles, which omitted a bunch of verses. Um in 1 John 5, 7, it says, We have these three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. We have the Trinity right there. The Spirit is the third member of the Godhead. Just, I'm just saying this as a, as a side note, because I think some people, um, they, they think the Holy Spirit isn't a member of the Trinity, and it's, it absolutely is. Um, also in, I think it's Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to flip to it quick just to double check before I send people there. But in Matthew, where are you? Chapter 3. Yeah, verses uh, 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, this is the beginning of his ministry, he went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So you have Jesus coming out of the water. Jesus is the Word made flesh, John chapter 1. That's the Word. That's one member of the Trinity. You have the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, descending like a dove and lighting upon him. That's number two. That's the Holy Spirit. And number three, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, that means that's the father speaking because he has the son. 
and that's the voice of the Father in heaven. You have all three simultaneously existing. You have the Word, the Spirit, and the, and, and the Father. All three are once, John, 1 John 5, 7. Um, so the Trinity is certainly there in Scripture, and you can see all through the Bible, you see the Word, you see the Father, you see the Holy Spirit. So the concept of the Trinity is present, even though the word Trinity is never used, um, but you can certainly see it. Um, yeah, so anyways, I just want to encourage you guys, the Holy Spirit is an essential essential part of, of our walk with God. It's, it's the third member of the, of, of the Trinity and it's given to us, the Holy Spirit, he's given to us at, to our benefit to, to help us to walk this out and to bear much fruit for God and to be refined and purged and, and all this stuff. So please don't take it lightly. I pray this is an encouragement to press in for God. Don't fall into the trap that Satan wants you to be in, which is that the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to us today or the, the spiritual gifts and you gotta, you gotta try hard to produce the fruit of the Spirit. It's not your effort that produces the fruit of the Spirit. It's the power of God within you transforming you. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you the power to do to, to, to operate in spiritual gifts, and it's the Holy Spirit that um, speaks to you and leads you into all truth, and you need to, you need to learn to listen to Him. Um, yeah, I think that's about pretty much everything. I hope that this helps you guys and encourages you. And again, it kind of builds off of last week, talking about a relationship with God, because the Holy Spirit builds us in our relationship with God. Um, so let's pray and close up. Uh, God, thank you for this time that we had together. I, I thank you for it. I pray that as, sorry, I pray that as we go into our week, God that um, you'll bless us and lead us and help us to listen to the Holy Spirit, to yield to the Holy Spirit, and, and to learn to, to allow our spirit to be one with you, and, and just free to guide us and help us to bear much fruit for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm sorry this, again, this wasn't live, because I'd like to take prayer requests, but if you guys have anything you want prayer for, you can text, email, or whatever, try to call us. Good luck. <laughs> because of that, we can't always take calls. Um, but anyways, we'd love to pray for you guys. Uh, if you guys could pray for Anya's stomach, it's been off for a little while now. And we're pretty convinced it's a spiritual thing. And um, if you guys could just keep praying keep in your prayers, that would be really appreciated. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining. I hope this was an encouragement and a blessing to you guys. And I pray you guys have a great week. And hopefully we'll be live next week. But if not, then I'll do another one of these videos. Okay? Have a great week, guys. Bye.